Learning new programming languages is not only a big part of software engineering, but also critical to keep your engineering jobs up to date. But picking up new languages and the ecosystem around them can be a daunting task for most people, because of which a lot of developers stick to one or two programming languages they're comfortable with. In today's constantly changing technology landscape, that can be a major limiting factor in your career progression. In today's video, I want to share some tips on learning new programming languages in a fast and effective manner. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. A good VPN service provides you with a secure encrypted tunnel for online traffic to flow. Nobody can see through that tunnel and get their hands on your internet data. NordVPN is the best VPN if you're looking for peace of mind when on public Wi-Fi as well. And you can enjoy online privacy and security on every platform because there's a NordVPN application for Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, and even Android TV. NordVPN offers a fast connection and no limits on bandwidth. You can choose from over 5,300 servers in 59 countries and enjoy the fastest VPN experience. So if you're serious about internet security and privacy, go to nordvpn.com slash utsav or use the code utsav to get a two-year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. The link is also in the description below. All right, let's get straight to the point. Step one. Use a programming language you already know as a reference to see what's similar or what's new in this programming language you're trying to learn. There's absolutely no point in grinding out hours of tutorials, paying for courses, or reading a ton of books about every new programming language. That's a more suitable route if you are learning your first ever programming language. But if you already know one, you can use what you know to your advantage. I know I said this video is about learning a new programming language, but usually people find themselves having to learn entire stacks or at least some combination of programming language and a framework. But the idea is really the same. So let's look at a practical example that is more likely to happen in a real world. Let's say that you've worked extensively building websites and web APIs in .NET and you want to expand your skills to be able to work with more commonly used technologies, maybe that are more lightweight and flexible. Um, let's say you want to go about learning some things in the JavaScript world, right? So the first thing to pick up is obviously JavaScript. So start by finding out how JavaScript is different from c -sharp. JavaScript is dynamic, you lose type safety, you won't have things like generics, there is no support for things like link, you also won't have a garbage collector, you get the idea. And if your goal is to build web APIs on JavaScript, you'll inevitably also come across Node.js. So now spend some time finding out what Node.js is. Uh, one of the things that is unique about Node.js is its highly asynchronous programming model, and that it's single-threaded architecture and its famous event loop. Spend some time learning about what those are. And then finally, you would need a framework, something like Express. Uh, so read up on how Express is different from ASP.NET. Perhaps it sacrifices feature sets to stay fast and lean and minimal. And while you're at it, spend some time understanding the pros and cons of each of these stacks as well. This will help you with the limitations and gotchas. Just remember that you don't have to be detailed at this point. Just find out how the new language or stack is different from what you already know. Step two, fill your knowledge gaps. Learn about things that you don't know. So once you have a list of things that you know are different from what you're used to, spend some time learning about them. If you're used to a synchronous programming model, spend some time learning about how async programming works. For example, if you have never worked with Node.js, you can use some online stack visualizers to kind of help you understand how the event loop works with callbacks. This is also a good time to watch a quick overview or even a tutorial for what you're trying to do. But like I said before, don't spend time learning every detail like assigning variables, creating loops and all that. You already know those things. It's only a matter of learning the syntax. Instead, find tutorials that will help you towards your end goal. For example, since you want to create web APIs, watch a quick tutorial or read up on references on how to create a web server using Node.js and Express. That will give you an idea of how to get going with starting up a project, installing packages and getting set up with the new stack. Step three. Pick up the new syntax and language-specific quirks. At this point, you want to work with the new language to get used to it enough to feel comfortable working with it. You can use an online code editor or just write simple modules of things that you can already do. Access the file system, manipulate some strings, work with conditionals and loops, just simple things. And if you're into algorithms, you can even go to places like Lead Code and solve a few problems with this new language. Step four, once you feel relatively comfortable with the syntax, pick up an existing project from your previous language and implement that in this new language or stack. You will get stuck a lot in this step. 
but most of the learning also happens in this stage as well. You'll also be looking up a lot of reference materials, but keep in mind that you have to finish the project. To make sure you complete, please pick something simple like a basic get and post API. And that's that really, this is all you really need to do to learn a new language. Uh, so to summarize, use the knowledge of an existing language to find out how this new language is different from that one. Then spend some time learning and filling your knowledge gaps. After that, spend some time getting used to the syntax and quirks of this new language. And finally, finish a simple project end to end. The learning does not stop there though. You will be learning something new even years after you've picked up the new language because learning is a continuous process. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and share. And while you're at it, please let me know in the comments below if you have your own tips for learning new programming languages fast. And please do consider subscribing to this channel for more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.